Hello and welcome to the Pretty Good Gaming Daily Triple, your no shit gaming news video. That's three news stories in one video with zero faff. Every day we get closer and closer to the release of Cyberpunk 2077, but in another reality we'd actually be playing it tomorrow. While in our boring reality we can't play the game tomorrow, CD Projekt is running another Night City Wire livestream, but ahead of that they've officially shared some next gen gameplay and doubled down on that December 10th release date. Although is it really still called next gen or is it current gen now? When does the change Ever happen. Like, technically, the PS5 isn't out worldwide until tomorrow, so I guess that's the cutoff. Anyway, the gameplay shown was around 10 minutes of footage that swapped between the Xbox One X and the new Xbox Series X. Both systems are very impressive to look at, but obviously, the Series X is the better option. Honestly, though, I'm impressed the game even runs on the old system, though, in fairness, it is the Xbox One X, not the original model, so if you're using a launch system, you may have a much worse time. And obviously, this is a deliberately selected and curated sequence, so don't take this is an example of how the whole game will run. CD Projekt even claimed that getting Cyberpunk to run on PS4 and Xbox One was a major contributor to the latest delay as the game is good to go on the new systems and PC. The footage features a quest delving into the sexy underbelly of Night City with Keanu Reeves' Johnny Silverhand sassing the player along the way. The quest is called Automatic Love and your character V is trying to track down a missing person by any means necessary. That leads V to the seedier side of Night City as she heads to a futuristic brothel. But of course this is a video game after all so so before long, V is in a firefight in a corridor where the player uses several different weapons. Taking a closer look, we can see that they're using the M215 Ajax assault rifle, the new pistol, a grenade, and the black unicorn sword. If I can settle every conflict with a sword, then this will definitely be game of the year. The quest wasn't played in full and was cut up to fit into the 10 minute runtime, but in addition to some brief combat, we also saw some quieter moments like traveling across Night City on foot and by car, as well as some simple NPC interactions and brain dancing. Brain dancing is a thing in Cyberpunk where you basically watch back through what someone else has already seen and lived, and it's mainly used for um, things that I'm not allowed to say on YouTube. At one point, V spoke to a punk who offered her help with a release, to which one of V's options was, I'm looking for fingers. Now, I can't be the only one who immediately thought things were going to go a very different way. Ultimately though, the player just chose to threaten and shoot them all with the new pistol and DB2 Batara shotgun. Sure, that's the quick way to do it, but if I have the option to f*** my way out of a problem in Cyberpunk, you can be damn sure that's the path I'm taking. I like sex. But in reality, it looks like Fingers is just a person rather than a perverted minigame, so they've missed a the trick there. In other Cyberpunk news, we've got an early look at what sort of install size we'll be looking at, and unsurprisingly, it's pretty hefty. This comes from a Reddit post who claims to work for an unnamed company which received some promo material for the game, including some box mockups. On the box, we can see that the install size for PS4 is 70 gigabytes, which is big, but not crazy, though I'd expect a beefy day one patch, and I could easily see the total install size hitting 100 gigabytes in no time. The game will also come on two Blu-ray discs, which isn't uncommon for big games these days like Red Dead Redemption 2, with one being the install disc and the other having the actual game on it. Inside the box you'll also get some physical goodies like a world map, stickers, postcards and a compendium, though this was already confirmed. With less than a month to go until launch, we have one more Night City Wire livestream to go, which will air tomorrow, and I'll probably be covering that in Friday's Daily Triple, so watch out for that. And next up, Capcom has had a pretty good run of it recently, with big hits like Resident Evil 2 Remake, Devil May Cry 5 and Monster Hunter World, but something that company definitely won't be celebrating is a huge hack that just hit it and caused loads of private information to be leaked. The hack first occurred on November the 2nd, but on Monday the company shared a press release detailing the severity of the situation. The attack has compromised 350,000 items of confidential data belonging to customers and business partners. This breach caused hackers to obtain data like names, signatures, addresses, and even passport information, but apparently credit card data is not at risk. In addition to the great swathes of personal data, game information was also obtained including upcoming release dates and unannounced games. If you don't want to see any of those, you can skip to this point. According to the leaked information which was available on sites like Reset Era, Resident Evil Village is meant to be coming in April 2021, Monster Hunter Rise is due in October 2021 and will come to PC in addition to Switch, and Monster Hunter Stories is coming in June 2021 also to PC in addition to Switch. There was also source code for DMC2 and Umbrella Chronicles, as well as information about how much certain companies have been paying Capcom for its games. It looks like Stadia paid 10 million for Resident Evil 7 and 8 to come to the platform, and Sony paid 5 million for Resi 7's demo, 
VR, and timed exclusivity on the DLC. In terms of unannounced projects, these include a Resident Evil Battle Royale game, oh boy, coming in September 2021. Something called Project Guillotine is coming to Switch in February and on other platforms later. An unknown game called Project Rewa is coming in May. Resi 4 is coming to Oculus for VR. A multiplayer shooter codenamed Shield, but apparently really called Snappers. Dai Gyakuten Saibun, 1 and 2 Western localization for PS4, Switch, and Steam, and I apologize for my pronunciation. Ace Attorney 7 is coming between the beginning of July and the end of September. And finally, Street Fighter 6. A Resident Evil Battle Royale. Jesus Christ, now that's a scary thought. The hack also obtained some documents which were allegedly addressing political correctness with things like sexuality, LGBT representation, and female characters, and specifically how to avoid controversy. Okay, here we go. I would be hesitant to say that Capcom is quote unquote going woke, as I really doubt Capcom actually gives a shit about pro or anti SJW agendas, it's just about the bottom line for them. Maybe they are going woke like many other games, but we'll have to wait and see what the actual games are like. It's really not about taking a moral position, it's just PR speak for advertisers more than it is game designers about avoiding controversy which could hurt sales. There is a little bit to suggest that some of it is aimed at actual game designers which really isn't great, but we don't know anything for sure. Obviously everything from this hack may be outdated or inaccurate since has been shared around on forums like Chinese Whispers and translated from Japanese, so don't take it all as fact. Those behind the attack claim to be the hacker group Ragnar Locker, which held the company to ransom with the stolen data, but Capcom refused their demands. Capcom said it contacted Osaka Police and that the investigation is ongoing, though I doubt they'll get anywhere with this stuff, as they rarely do. It also said it will be contacting people whose data has been affected, so be on the lookout for Capcom emails if you play those games. And finally, after launching Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Watch Dogs Legion, Ubisoft has one more game up its sleeve before the year is out. That game is Immortals Phoenix Rising, formerly known as the Superior Gods and Monsters, and is due for release in December, but that hasn't stopped Ubisoft detailing plans for post-launch content already. The game is an open-world fantasy RPG set within the ancient Greek mythology where you play as the titular Phoenix. Episode 1 of the season pass, A New God, will build on that with challenges in the Trial of the Olympians. Then with the second part, Myths of the Eastern Realm, the game will expand to include Chinese mythology. Honestly, if that was the focus of the main game, I'd be way more interested in it because we've seen so much ancient Greek stuff recently and very little ancient Chinese. This will put you in the shoes of a new character called Ku who will face new deities and monsters with a new Chinese martial arts fighting style. Finally, part 3, The Lost Gods will really shake things up by adding a top-down brawler style of combat with another character called Ash. The game launches on pretty much everything apart from Nintendo Switch on December 3rd. All this does sound pretty cool to be fair, but I just feel nothing for this game. After playing through Watch Dogs Legion and Assassin's Creed Valhalla recently, another Ubisoft open world is just the last thing I need right now. Now that Gears Tactics is out on console, that will be the perfect palette cleanser before Cyberpunk comes out and I sink into another open world. And that's your lot for today. If you enjoyed this no shit format, go ahead and give the video a like to give it a boost. Hit subscribe and the bell if you want to stay up to date on all future installments. Toss a coin to your YouTuber over at patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. That's all for today. I've been Henry Cooper. Bye for now.